Hi, it's Ian from Huge Menace, and this is a Getting Started Guide for the ND Asset Library. ND is our free add-on for Blender, and from version 2 onwards, it comes with powerful new tools and assets built with geometry nodes. There's a lot you can do with Blender's built-in modifiers, but these new tools are designed to take us further, with new capabilities that extend what is possible in a non-destructive workflow. There's also a set of prefabricated objects included, which demonstrate these new capabilities. The ND Asset Library requires Blender 4.5 LTS as a minimum supported version. To get started, ensure you have ND installed by visiting the add-on page at Blender Extensions. The Asset Library is an optional one-click install, available from the N panel. Click the Install button. Now when you open the Asset Browser, everything is organised in a catalogue called ND. There are three types of tools included in the ND Asset Library. Generators, which output new non-destructive geometry, such as ND Polygon. A generator has to be applied to an existing mesh primitive object. The original object's geometry is discarded and new geometry is generated. Operators, which take input geometry and modify it non-destructively, such as ND Extrude. Selectors, which take input geometry and filter mesh elements, like vertices, edges and faces, to form a selection. This selection is then stored as a named attribute to be accessed in a later operation. These tools are designed to make some everyday modeling tasks easier, as well as allowing for new techniques. ND will continue to leverage built-in modifiers, but will be looking to expand the geometry nodes toolset into the future. Let's have a look at a few examples. This is a default cube. It's used to being treated poorly, but this time let's show it some love by giving it a non-destructive makeover. With the cube selected, drag the ND grid generator from the asset browser onto the cube. If we turn on wireframes, we can see that the grid has four faces. Open the modifier stack and you can adjust parameters to control the number of vertices in the X and Y axes. Let's give it some thickness by dropping an ND extrude operator onto it. Drag the yellow gizmo to set the extrusion amount, or set the distance parameter in the modifier stack. Unlike a regular extrusion, there's an option to increase the number of steps. Thanks to geometry nodes, we've transformed our default cube into the best non-destructive version of itself. We've also just built ND primitive cube which from now on, you can drag into your scene whenever you need a parametric cube that's reached a level of self-actualization the default cube could only dream of. When modeling hard surface objects, you often want to cut holes for bolts, screws, or other surface details. Sometimes you'll need several of them across a surface. The Asset Library has a few tools that can help us, so let's try them out. Drag in an ND primitive cube from the Asset Library. Adjust the extrude distance to make it a flatter slab shape. Drag the ND hole countersink prefab onto the cube and ensure that it is aligned to the center. This prefab is actually just a single vertex with the ND hole generator, replacing the original mesh with a fully non-destructive solution. Every generator works this same way and must be added to a host object with a single vertex to work correctly. With the hole cutter selected, hold shift and select the cube. Press F to bring up the fast menu and choose the difference boolean. Make the hole a little smaller by adjusting the hole diameter and counter diameter. If you like, you can also easily change the hole type for a different result. I want a hole in each corner of the surface. Drag the ND array rectangular operator onto the hole cutter. This creates an array on two axes. And if we adjust both the direction parameters to symmetrical, it will be centered on the cube. The cutters are too close to each other, so next we adjust the distance to place them in the corners. To finish off, you can toggle the visibility of the whole cutter utilities by pressing Shift T. There's a new way to make pipes using ND version 2 that replaces the previous pipe generator. Rather than an all in one tool driven by the overlay menu, this new approach favors composition of smaller building blocks. Let's make a simple pipe to explore these new capabilities. In the front orthographic view, add a single vertex and extrude it a few times to form an edge path. 
Back in object mode, drag an ND path smooth operator onto it. This operator allows us to fill at the corners of our path by setting the corner segments and corner radius parameters. To make this into a pipe, we need to sweep a profile shape along the path. Switch to the perspective view. You can use any 2D shape, but let's drag in an ND primitive circle to use as our profile. Adjust the radius to define the thickness of the pipe. The next step is to apply an ND sweep operator to the path. Set the profile parameter by picking the circle we just created. This sweeps the profile along the path. You can also toggle fill caps if you don't want it to be hollow. To tidy up, select the circle profile followed by the pipe. Press Alt T to open the Utils menu and choose Mark as Utility. This ensures the circle profile is marked as a utility, disabled in renders, and parents it to the pipe to keep things organized. ND Sweep is great for making pipes, but you can use any kind of custom 2D profile shape to create rails, tracks, or any other kind of profile swept along a path. Before we move on to a more advanced example, we'd like to say a huge thanks to all our patrons and those of you who have donated through Gumroad or Superhive. ND is an entirely free and open source project and your donations help support its ongoing development. If you don't already support us and would like to, we have a few tiers available on our Patreon. Otherwise, you can make a once-off donation by purchasing ND on Gumroad, Superhive or the donation post on Patreon. You can find the links for each option in the video description. It would be nice to be able to put connectors or fittings onto each end of the pipe. If you've ever tried DIY plumbing, you know this isn't as easy as it seems. So please consider this as a more advanced workflow example. To place an object at each end of the pipe, we would need some way to reference the path endpoints. But the path disappeared after we swept a profile along it. So what do we do? Our modifier stack is a series of operations that modify the data and pass on the result. This means the original edge path geometry data and the smoothed version of it does not exist in the stack after the ND sweep. But what if we could still reference the path geometry at the bottom of the stack? That would be useful. And with ND's geometry node powered modifiers, you can do exactly this. To achieve this, we're introducing a new paradigm to the modifier stack, allowing you to maintain reference geometry alongside working geometry. This enables you to work on the result of the last modifier, just like a regular built-in modifier, or optionally work on geometry preserved from earlier in the stack. You can imagine this like having two streams of geometry data coming into a modifier, allowing you to choose which one becomes the working geometry you wish to operate on. The combination of working and reference geometry is referred to collectively as input geometry. Let's look closely at how this works. Select the pipe and toggle on X-ray mode with Alt-Z. Expand the ND path smooth and ND sweep modifiers in the stack. Built into each ND modifier, you can find some advanced parameters. These will vary depending on the specific tool, but you'll find two common parameters in almost every one. The context parameter determines which portion of the input geometry the modifier will work with. This is how you tell the modifier what to operate on. For many tools, this is set to input geometry by default, meaning it will do its work on all the geometry provided to it from higher in our stack. In our use case here, ND Sweep is going to operate on the smoothed path we created. That's what we want, so we'll leave that setting alone. Context will become relevant lower down the stack. When an ND modifier has completed its work, you can optionally define what the next reference geometry will be. This is set to none by default. But if we set it to input geometry, it will preserve the smoothed path that came as input and mark it as reference. You can see this appear in the viewport, meaning the ND sweep modifier is now outputting both working geometry and reference geometry. That's really useful because now we have a way to work with the path after the ND sweep has done its job. We need a pipe fitting to place on the ends of the path. Let's use a prefab found in the asset library. We don't want this particular object to appear in renders, so mark it as a utility and parent it to the pipe with Alt T. To attach this, add an ND attach operator to the pipe. Set the object parameter by using the picker to select our pipe fitting. 
We don't see anything yet because ND Attach needs to know exactly where you want to place the object. If you check the default selection, this makes a huge mess. It places our pipe fitting on every single vertex of the pipe. What we need to do is change the context that the ND Attach operator is working on. Switching this to reference gives us a better result. Now we are placing fittings on each vertex of the path, but we need to be precise with our selection. So to do that, add an ND Select Endpoints selector to the pipe. We need this to make a selection on the path, so drag it up the modifier stack so it sits just after the ND Path Smooth modifier. This selector stores three data attributes on the endpoints of our path, which we can use to refine our attachment. When we return to the ND Attach modifier, we can change the selection parameter by clicking the Input Attribute Toggle icon and choosing the ND Endpoint Stored Attribute. That's much better. Now we have a pipe fitting on both ends of our pipe. Let's do the same for the Direction and Rotation parameters. To finish, we can adjust the scale of the attachment to match the pipe. The end result of all our efforts is a fully parametric pipe generator with custom pipe fittings. We can add more points to the path and tweak one of the many parameters to customize this further. Don't forget to check the official written documentation for more information on how each ND modifier works. We've only just scratched the surface, but these examples demonstrate the power and flexibility of using many smaller building blocks composed together to achieve a non-destructive workflow. Although we have replaced a few of the previous all-in-one tools with this new approach, the end result is a more flexible and powerful system in the long term. As the ND asset library matures, we may reintroduce help operations to the ND overlay menu that orchestrate some of the most common setups like the pipe example we've just constructed. We're only just getting started with the ND asset library and the possibilities that Geometry Nodes offers. You can expect new and enhanced tools in the future, and we welcome ideas, feedback, and community contributions to help make it the best it can be. We look forward to hearing what you think and seeing what you create with it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.